In this video, I'm going to do something new that you're unlikely to find elsewhere. It's going to turn technical and I'm not going to talk about stock price, short term hype, or even long term targets. While I do love discussing each one of those, I want to return to the roots of this channel and what makes it unique. A focus on finding the value in a business 10 years out in discovery of a 10x return. Tesla was my first considerable investment back in 2017. On those shares, just three years later, I've earned that very same elusive 10x return. And I will keep buying TSLA because I see another 10x move by decades end. But that's just a personal example. What you're here for are my thoughts on the next super move in a stock. One that could give you financial freedom never before possible or set you up nicely for retirement. I've likened Palantir to Tesla and Alex Karp to Elon Musk, but if this is even a partial comparison between PLTR and TSLA, it has to be in the value of the business. So, in this video, I'll dive deep into one of the most important platforms of Palantir, Foundry. I hope this will give you a better way to understand one of the products that powers the core of Palantir and could potentially, with drastic expansion and subsequent market success, propel the company and the stock multiples higher to 10x and become a multi-hundred billion dollar company. And with that, let's get started. If you've been following along with me, you know that I did a read aloud on Palantir's first blog post about their business model. And now, today, I'll be sharing recently released part two of that blog post detailing the crucial aspects of Palantir's software. But first, I'll give you an overview of Foundry. The basics. Foundry is essentially a data warehouse to help companies collect and analyze information. Access to this platform includes a graphical data interface and statistical analysis made possible by AI machine learning networks. Foundry, as opposed to Palantir Gotham, is more focused towards the private sector, a huge yet demanding opportunity for PLTR. Well, we sell two platforms, Gotham and Foundry, and they are vertically integrated end-to-end -end platforms that are designed to be the central operating system of a modern enterprise. We have invested for years in building two truly unique platforms that are focused exclusively on helping our customers win. And that's because they're focused exclusively on alpha generation. In the government context, it's pretty hard to get more alpha than how do you win the literal war? And in the commercial context as well, it's not just how do I beat my competitor, but how do I secure my place as the entire value chain that I exist in is being disrupted all around me. And we help our customers generate this alpha because our platforms embrace the fundamental complexity of our customers' operations, rather than forcing them into incorrect and preconceived notions. As a result, our platforms, they become integral to our customers' operations. What does that mean in the real world? It means that at Chrysler plants in North America, you will find Foundry open on the stations of the assembly line used to manage quality in real time. That at BP, oil production flows through Foundry. Our software has become the place customers make decisions and where they go to continuously learn how to make better decisions. You can't do that with analytics or a data platform. It's not enough. It's grossly insufficient. You're not going to win a war with the data platform. You can't discover new drugs with analytics. You need a central operating system. I'm going to run through Palantir's description of this integral part of their business on their website. Palantir Foundry is a platform that reimagines how people use data by removing the barriers between back-end data management and front-end data analysis. Foundry enables users with a varying technical ability and deep subject matter expertise to work meaningfully with data. With Foundry, anyone can source, connect, and transform data into any shape they desire, then use it to take action. Now I know that sounds super abstract, but let's dig deeper into what is really going on here. Under the hood, Palantir Foundry is backed by data integration and business logic in tandem. Versioning semantics to keep logic in sync, security to replace unreliable one-off policies, code analyses and reports to enable safe experimentation, architecture to keep individual components in sync, formats to interoperate an organization's entire data ecosystem, flexible frameworks to keep evolving regulations and best practices. 
So that was the back end. Here is the front end for the people actually doing work for the businesses. Palantir Foundry's front end capabilities let every user tap into the power of their organization's data. A foundation to drive collaboration, discovery, and serendipity, an ontology to turn data landscape into a representation of the entire organization, data sets and analyses that allow users to build on one another's work, data lineage that lets users jump from insights and logic that feed them. Analytical tooling to supercharge and accelerate advanced analytical initiatives. Assuming your head is spinning by now, let's take a step back. And it's not crucial that you understand every single word I'm saying, although I did type out some dictionary definitions in the description below if you want to check those out. But the main idea here and the purpose for you watching this video is for you to be able to understand the whole essence of Palantir Foundry and how it all comes together, what it means for businesses, what it means for employees, and how this platform is so unique in its capabilities. We think of our platforms as internal software aggregators in the Ben Thompson sense of the word aggregator. We are aggregating the supply of all the data in the enterprise. We have the greatest source of truth, well-modeled, ontologized, with security built in. And we are aggregating the demand in the form of all the users who make operational decisions. And so to accomplish this, we have to onboard a critical mass of the enterprise onto the operating system. And once you are at that critical mass, the software does the work from there. In effect, you can walk away and stop investing in installation when while remaining completely confident that the software will provide ever increasing value. Hitting that threshold means that our software is the most logical place for the enterprise to implement the next marginal application because they have already amassed all the data and this is where their users live and make operational decisions all day long. Powering data transformation. Boundary's capabilities comprise the four core pillars of a flexible and enduring transformation. Data security. Protect data confidently with automatic propagation from source system to final insight. Understand how an insight came to be with lineage and versioning of both data and code. Protect production without disconnecting it from the sandbox environment. So we got a big focus on data security here, thinking from the ground up on how to build the safest, most secure system, and in this case, platform for Foundry. Business ontology. Unify the organization by capturing every business concept in a common ontology. Compound business intelligence by feeding insights back into the ontology. Improve the quality of ontology data. So it's all about building upon what you already have. Analytical diversity. Empower business analysts with point and click environments that unlock complex analytics. Supercharge advanced analytics for data engineers and data scientists. Accelerate machine learning and artificial intelligence with quality data and seamless deployment to production. So within a subset, you need to make sure you have analytical diversity. You need to make sure the data you have is diverse enough to be feeding the algorithm in the right way. Openness and extensibility. Enhance the value of existing IT investments by centralizing data operations. Plug in to in-house and third-party solutions through open data formats and open APIs. Accelerate future projects and reduce their cost with reusable data pipelines and centralized management. So that's just bringing it all together in a safe way and really opening up to opportunities that were not possible before in those specific contexts. The real world application. So what are organizations doing with Palantir Foundry? A successful data transformation requires the whole organization to operate in lockstep. With Foundry, the enterprise comes together to transform the organization and turn data into a competitive advantage. Something very key about Foundry that you will not find in the same way elsewhere. Using Palantir Foundry for your business creates a competitive advantage with how you are able to diagnose and extrapolate from what you are able to learn on the back end and have your employees put in on the front end for your business. They list examples here. Deliver immediate compounding business value. Unite the organization around a common ontology. Manage data and business logic in tandem. Secure the data once. Secure the system in perpetuity. Instill trust in data with continuous improvement and make operations analytical and analytics operational. So I didn't want to read off every single paragraph there, but instead I want to give a more visual representation from this separate PDF that I found 
from Palantir's website. Foundry in action. From research and development to clinical trials to production and distribution, the pharmaceutical industry generates massive amounts of data. The company that harnesses this data can make better informed decisions to bring new products to market faster and more safely. When Airbus set out to accelerate its aircraft production timeline, we teamed up to improve its manufacturing efficiency while ensuring the delivery of safe and high quality aircraft. The aircraft manufacturing process generates a massive amount amount of data. Airbus knew there were valuable insights to be gained if it could make sense of the data scale and diversity. In a world where sitting in front of the TV is no longer the only way we consume media, it's hard to put the right ads and marketing in front of the right audiences. We're helping a major US broadcast network reinvent how they use data to drive revenue and target audiences. For vehicle manufacturers, quality deficiencies are an existential threat to reputation and profits. We work with one of the world's largest automakers to improve quality and reliability to reduce warranty claims and recalls. A major payment processor handles billions of credit card transactions per year. When we met, they saw a lot of potential for this data in their high turnover industry, where merchant customers have little incentive to pick one provider over another. Need I say any more? Those are all great examples. If you weren't sure how Foundry was being used in the real world, how it was being put into action, those are all great examples to look back on. This is a real competitive advantage for those businesses. They use Foundry and they are getting real value from it. And what does that mean? They are relying on Palantir to continue to support that platform so they can use it. They are paying Palantir for the right to be able to use Foundry. And that's where these giant contracts come from. But if Palantir really is going to 10x, they need their Foundry platform to just take off. And that means they need small and medium businesses using it as well. And that's something I've said in the past. And that's something I'll keep saying in the future. Foundry needs to go mainstream for this company to dominate. No, it is not the only thing that will determine their success. But Foundry taking over would certainly be a step in the right direction. We compete against our customers, more specifically against our customers desire to build their own solution internally. Historically, periods of macro instability or crisis have been a huge tailwind for us. The global financial crisis, ISIS attacks in Europe in 2015 and 2016, the present day COVID, and it's a tailwind for us because it means that the competitive alternative of building your own solution in three years or more is just not viable, it's just not feasible. But we're in 36 industries and we have a unique ability to draw on cross industry insights as we do R&D. Often people look at, what, at, at this kind of industry spread and they think about verticalization. Are we getting leverage from the R&D we're doing and the things that we're learning about any given vertical? But I think that undersells the real power here. The real power is the cross industry leverage that we've been getting. How our digital twin capabilities improve oil production, but also drive how someone should do PPE allocation at a national level, or how the experiences optimizing F1 race cars drive the experiences of optimizing wind energy production. And this, this is what's increasingly powering uh, the business. Uh, and, and so you see this in, in the, the, the depth that we're achieving within these verticals, but the acceleration and the, and the application we have to new industries and new verticals as we approach them. The platform, nearly everything sounds great in practice. So I'll thumb through some screen images as a way to illustrate the real life Palantir interface. This is what the secret sauce of PLTR looks like. In my opinion, it's a good aesthetic with a focus on productivity and solving the problems that need to be solved. Now on to what inspired me to make this video. Two clips released by Palantir themselves. I'll chop those together and play them back for you now. Enjoy this rare insight behind the scenes. I'll be back with closing analysis. Palantir Foundry is a software platform that allows organizations to bring their data together and then enables their users to conduct sophisticated analytics and operations on top of the unified data. Access to the platform does not necessarily mean access to all of the data it contains. Our customers can set up access controls to define which individuals get access to what data. This demo will show how our clients can implement a purpose-based access control model in Palantir Foundry. A purpose is a specific objective that data is used to support. For example, in the healthcare context, one such purpose might be PPE allocation. 
making sure the supply of PPE to each hospital meets that hospital's specific needs. First, an operational decision maker proposes a purpose. If this purpose is approved as legitimate by information governance officials, the purpose gets a secure, access-controlled space in the Foundry platform. No users or data can enter this space yet. Then, data that has been approved as necessary and proportionate for this work is added to the space. Finally, users can apply for access to the space if they've been tasked to work on this purpose. At each step of the process, a rich history of why any given approval has been made is recorded. Users never apply for data access directly, but instead must apply for access to a purpose. And each purpose contains only the data that has already been judged to be necessary and proportionate to achieve the stated goal. Let's see how this works in practice. In this first scenario, I'll play the role of an analyst who's been tasked with distributing protective equipment in the capital. For this demo, I have already been granted access to the Foundry platform by my organization but I have not yet been granted access to any data. I am presented with a list of purposes. Each of these purposes represents a different work stream with different users and data. I'll choose the one that's matched to my responsibilities. To do this, I'll search capital and PPE. Now I should check that this purpose is right for me. If I click into it, I can see a more detailed description of the purpose, along with other information such as who leads this project. I can also see which data assets are approved for work towards this purpose. If this matches my responsibilities, I can request access to this purpose. If approved, I'll get access to the secure space for this purpose, where the relevant data is held. I first select what access type I need. This will determine my permissions within the secure space. For example, users might be able to view but not edit or download data. Next, I must write a justification according to organizational policy, about why I should be granted access to this purpose. I then submit my request to the owner of the purpose for evaluation. This may be a decision maker from the customer's data governance team or a domain expert that has undergone data governance training. Now let's switch roles to a purpose owner to look at how such a request would be evaluated. As a purpose owner, I have an inbox for access requests to my purposes. Let's evaluate the request we saw earlier. By clicking into this request, I am presented with the information I need to make a fully informed decision. I can see who made the request, their role, and their organization. I can see which purpose they've requested access to, what permissions they've requested, and their justification for doing so. This is a configurable view, so data governance teams can add any additional fields they require. If I'm unsatisfied with the request as it stands, I can enter into a discussion with the requester using an in-platform functionality. The complete history of this discussion is preserved in Foundry and tied to the request. I could, for example, ask that a letter of approval from their manager be attached. If I'm satisfied that this request is now compliant with information governance standards, I can approve the request, recording a written justification for doing so. This will give the analyst access to the data they need to do their job. Let's talk about how data gets added to a purpose. In this demo, I will first take on the role of a purpose owner for PPE distribution, requesting the addition of data to my purpose. Then I'll take on the role of a data owner evaluating this request. As a purpose owner, I have access to this administrative view of my purpose. By adding purpose leads, I can assign qualified delegates to help evaluate access requests. Having multiple people available to evaluate these requests can help ensure that each one receives the appropriate amount of scrutiny. I can assign an expiry date to the purpose so that when the date is reached, Foundry will revoke access, delete data, or flag the purpose to a senior data governance user for review. If a new data asset becomes available that I believe is well scoped to my purpose, I can issue a request to the data owner of that asset, asking approval for it to be added to my purpose. When I click Add Data Assets, I'm presented with a list of the datasets available on the platform. I select the appropriate data asset and initiate my request. I must then write a justification to the data asset owner, explaining why I believe this specific data asset is necessary, proportional, and compliant for my purpose. If this request is approved, 
This data asset will then become available to the approved users of my purpose. I'll now switch roles to the data asset owner. This data governance decision maker is a representative of the organization that owns the data set being requested. In this role, I have an inbox of requests from purpose owners asking for my data assets to be approved for use within their purpose. If I click into one of these requests, Foundry presents me with metadata to help inform my decision. I can see which data asset has been requested for which purpose and who has made this request. I can see the justification provided and if any similar requests have been denied in the past. By clicking into the relevant purpose, I can see which data assets are already available for this purpose. If the dataset that has been requested contains de-identified personal data, I can evaluate re-identification risks that might come with other data already in this purpose. As before, I can request further information and the attachment of approvals in the platform. Once I'm confident that I have the information I need, I can make my final decision for which I must also enter a justification. Now we're all set, and I can approve this request. Final thoughts on Foundry. Overall, if Palantir continues its past success and carries that forward with future success for their Foundry platform, PLTR could be on their way to being a key part of any business's decision-making process, providing almost immeasurable value and gaining that in return. I think Foundry and its future iterations will make it that such product, at least to some degree. Do you agree? Given everything I've pulled together in this video, do you think Palantir can take over the corporate world with Foundry by decade's end and do some real good in the world along the way? Leave any discussion in the comments. If we can get 2,000 likes, I'll continue the series and analyze both Gotham and Apollo. So drop a like if my analysis was helpful to you and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time.